Nina worked as an accountant and she recently turned 50. She had been deeply passionate about financial services since an early age. But nowadays, she felt less and less enthusiastic about coming to work each day. She felt less inclined to meet up with her coworkers for lunch or other recreational activities after work. In the past, she has always made an effort to maintain her health and appearance. But nowadays, she felt less reason to bother. After getting home from work, she would feel so fatigued that she would end up eating fast food for dinner in front of the TV. Nina would ignore invitations from her friends to socialize and have fun. While on the phone with a friend who was worried about her behavior, Nina simply replied, it might be some sort of a midlife crisis. But what if it wasn't just a midlife crisis? What if there were 16.2 million people in the United States who may have experiences like Nina's? What if people like Nina could be our acquaintances, our friends, or our family? Nina is a fictional character, but she represents someone that I care about. She represents one of my loved ones who suffers from a mental disorder. Today, my aim isn't to cultivate sympathy. My aim is to cultivate change. So today, let's first learn more about people like Nina. Next, let's analyze what happens to people like Nina in American society before finally discovering some solutions. But firstly, let's learn more about people like Nina. Nina suffers from depression, but mental illnesses are varied in type and severity of symptoms. Conditions like schizophrenia and bipolar disorder tend to be the most severe, while more common mental health conditions include obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD, and anxiety disorders. But furthermore, the National Alliance on Mental Illness explains how it's likely that nearly one in every five Americans suffers from a mental health disorder. That's 46.2 million people. Now, many people believe that these kinds of disorders can result in drastic sci-fi movie-like symptoms, but some individuals with mental illness lead lives relatively similar to the rest of the American population. People like Demi Lovato, Michael Phelps, and Brooke Shields all suffer from a form of mental illness, but they achieved immense success in their lifetimes despite this. In fact, mental illnesses can even contribute to these successes. Many individuals with bipolar disorder, for example, turned out to be very successful entrepreneurs later in life. This might be due to the fact that people with bipolar disorder tend to be more creative and innovative than other individuals. But remember, there's a reason why Nina is fictional. There's a reason why so many individuals who struggle with mental illness hesitate to go to the doctor. The answer is stigma. Now you might be wondering, what exactly is this stigma? Well, the character of Anna from the book Because of Mr. Trupt puts it best. She explains how a stigma is similar to when you can see a group of people standing in a circle and holding hands, but you are unable to join that circle and link your arms with another person. You are ostracized, left behind. But let's take a trip back in time to understand the origins of the mental illness stigma. In fact, the history of the stigma can be traced back to the Middle Ages, when mental illness was considered to be a punishment from God. Sufferers were thought to be possessed by the devil and were kept in prisons and madhouses. Lobotomies, or incisions into the skull, were very common. And later, in the 1940s, during Hitler's regime, we saw that almost 275,000 psychiatric patients were slaughtered because of their illness. Unfortunately, the strength of this stigma has definitely not dwindled in recent years. At an early age, we have all been taught to use words like OCD and depressed without understanding their true meaning. You organize your things in such a particular way. You're so OCD. Oh no, I missed the Taylor Swift concert. I'm so depressed. We throw around these adjectives so often in our daily lives, and yet we forget to realize that there are 450 million people around the globe who actually suffer from these kinds of mental illnesses every single day. But why? Why do we do this? The answer is actually quite simple. It's fear. And societal influence compounds this fear, solidifying it into an inherent 
difficult to change bias. Unfortunately, the violent portrayal of the mentally ill in the movies has had one particular effect in sealing these negative stereotypes. Also, the reporting of news on various media platforms also contributes to this stigma. A study published by the American Journal of Psychiatry found that when a group of study participants were read a news brief about a mass shooting by a man with a serious mental illness, they indicated less of a willingness to live near or work closely with individuals with a serious mental Ill disorder. Or the inverse, when something bad happens, it's immediately blamed upon those suffering with mental disorders. In trying to find reason for nonsensical violent crimes, people say that only someone who is sick could do such a thing. And the sickness in this case would not be associated with diabetes or heart disease, but with sickness of the mind. But to the contrary, the opposite is in fact true, because research shows that even in cases of severe mental illness, there's no significant link between having a mental illness and the possibility of a mass shooting or other forms of extreme violence. In fact, the data show that over 95% of all violent crimes are committed by individuals who are not mentally ill. So it's clear that many individuals characterize mentally ill persons as wolves in sheep's clothing, when in fact, the opposite is true. They're sheep in wolves' clothing. But why does all of this matter? Well, according to Mental Health America, there are more than 40 million Americans who currently suffer from mental illnesses. One out of every five individuals will not receive the treatment they need because they are too afraid to experience the stigma. Researchers at King's College London examined data from over 90,000 participants from across the globe and found that the stigma of surrounding mental illness was one of the most primary reasons why people didn't seek treatment. At the end of the day, it's easy to say that my child broke her leg, my blood pressure is skyrocketing, oh, my father is diabetic, or even I'm suffering from gonorrhea. But talking about your mental illness is not acceptable. For example, Brooke Shields, an American model and actress, was diagnosed with postpartum depression. She explains how, quote, if I had been diagnosed with any other disease, I would have run to get help. I would have worn it like a badge, but I did it. Unfortunately, like most other institutionalized issues in America today, it's impossible for me to tell you all some neat little acronym or catchphrase that you should adopt in your lives, click your heels three times, and magically arrive in a land free of stigma. However, I will say this. One of the most important steps that we can all take towards mitigating this stigma is to simply have conversations. There is evidence that individuals who are more informed about mental illness are less stigmatizing than individuals who are misinformed. We can all talk and listen. We can replace those awkward silences with words of support. We can all spread the word that mental illness is usually simply the result of an imbalance of a chemical in the brain, and many of these illnesses can easily be treated with medications. Express your support for organizations such as NAMI or the National Alliance on Mental Illness through NAMI walks or awareness campaigns. But in addition to this, Sherry Harding, a mental health expert and professor of nursing at Regis College in Massachusetts, notes that awareness of language is essential. We are all guilty of being imprecise or hyperbolic at times, but it's important to avoid misusing this language. We can all try and decrease the frivolous use of words like hyper, sicko, or OCD. Also, be willing to provide support to those with mental illness. Think of it this way. If you had a friend named Erin and she broke her leg, what would you do? Most likely, you would visit her in the hospital, aid her family, and provide her with as much comfort as possible. At the end of the day, it should be the same for people like Nina. What truly is the distinction between suffering from a broken leg and a broken brain? The answer is none. So let's provide this equivalent support to both the Aaron's and the Nina's of our world. So today, we first learned more about people like Nina, analyzed what happens to people like Nina in American society before finally discovering some solutions to the stigma issue. Now at the end of the day, it might seem hard 
It might seem like our inherent biases are indelible, but with time and with effort, they can be erased. With support from people like you and people like me, we can all try to make Nina's life just a little bit easier.